Welcome to Old Classic Car, and here we are with original photographs of pre-war British cars, part number two. And to begin, BRB223, which has a glorious old Rover there with two gentlemen stood beside it. BRB is a Derbyshire registration from 1935, and the car is a Rover 14, one of the P1 series cars as they were known. Carrying on with these pre-war car photographs, we've got the first of several Morris 8s to feature in this particular video here. A side view of a Morris 8 Series 1 Tourer. They say it looks like a four-seat Tourer, hood raised, uh, in a suburban setting. What a great little car that is. And talking of Morris 8 and Morris 8 Tourers in particular here, we have the Series 2. This was only produced for a year or two after the Series 1. It's got the painted radiator surrounding the solid wheels as opposed to the spoked wheels on the early car. This photo must have been taken during the Second World War. You can see a headlight mask on one of the headlamps there, so clearly probably early 1940s. Now here's an interesting one, OG8735. This is an Aston Martin International, one and a half litre sports car. First owner was a gentleman by the name of John Cadbury, apparently, in 1931 to 33, And this car is still around happily. That's great news. And here, something more modest, an Austin 7, an Austin 7 box saloon, OJ4557. That is a Birmingham registration series from 1932 or 1933. But yeah, great little car. Motoring for the masses, first introduced in 1922. Slightly older than that Austin 7, slightly blurry, but an interesting subject. So I've included it here. I think this is a bean. Uh, probably a 14 horsepower tour or something like that. I like the cover on the spare wheel on the running board. You don't see that too often. But yeah, I think that is a bean. And quite a rare car that is now. Carrying on with these pre-war photographs, we've got a lovely Mulliner bodied car here. This is a Daimler. You can see the fluted radiator just about. A 20 horsepower limousine. Um, probably late 20s, about 1927 to 1930 or thereabouts. But a stunning photograph. This must have been an official Arthur Mulliner Limited photograph presumably shortly after bodying the car now i'm not quite sure what cars and other motorcycles and things we're looking at here there's a morris bullnose just peeking out from behind another large tour i don't know where this is sadly but i just thought it was a great scene of motoring in the 1920s so i thought i would include it here how different things must be on that scene now compared to 100 years ago now cgk 634 that's a london registered 1935 standard I think it's probably a standard 10. It's definitely a pre-war car. And a very tall gentleman posed alongside it, again in the suburbia setting. Um, but yes, yeah, standards were very, very popular back in the pre-war days. Now here are some interesting photographs. Um, these are dated, I believe, 1939. Um, and this is an Allard, uh, a prototype Allard. It's the location is actually a Ford factory. Um, and Allards were powered by the V8 Ford engine. But this is a very rare car. It's an experimental car with a retracting metal roof. Here it is, part way down being folded. And it's interesting, if you peer uh, in the background there, you can just see one or two gents peering through the windows at the young lady demonstrating and posing with this very unusual car. It could be a K1 Allard prototype. Um, there are some similarities to a car called the Dolphin Allard, which was produced in 1947-48. And again, you can see a young lad peering through the window there in the background. I think that's just a great old photograph, that is. Uh, but yeah, if you can shed more light on this car, this has been in the image archive section of the main website for quite a few years now, but I thought I'd include them here because it's just such an interesting subject. Great old car, that one. Back to more mainstream machines, NV8324. That is a mid-1930s Wolseley. Could be a 1248. Um, I'm not quite sure, but if you know, let me know in the comments. And it dates to about 1936. Hatted gentleman there. Of course, many cars had quite tall uh, roof lines back in those days to allow people to wear hats while they were driving. Now, OU2730, this is another car that is still around. It's been rebuilt. It's an MGM type midget from 1929. It's still around, still with us, and now it is supercharged. Um, late, more recent photos I've seen of this car show a supercharger hanging off the front end. Check out Google Images with that registration number. 
Now we have an old Austin here. And this, I mean, the Austin 8 and the 10 are very similar, but this is an 8. And you can tell that because it has a one-piece rear window. You can just see it through the door windows there. Whereas the Austin 10 had a two-piece rear screen. I like the garage in the background as well. I won't mind that. And talking of Austin 8, we now have a head-on view of a Tora. We can see part of the registration there, EUR. So that confirms it spent its early years motoring around Hertfordshire. The car itself dates to about 1939, but there are very, very few Austin 8 tours around now. Some of them were pressed into service with the military, in fact, they're quite a popular choice. Now, side on view of another pre-war gem here. And this is a little Vauxhall, the Vauxhall 10-4. These were built either side of World War II. Apparently, it was the first British car to have unitary, i.e. chassisless construction. And these were introduced in 37 and were reintroduced um, after the war and were produced until, I think, 1947. Interesting old singer here, DGP 161, a London registered car from 1936. This is a Singer Bantam, a nine horse car, and for some reason it appears to have various beer mats attached to the radiator grill. I'm not quite sure what's going on there, but it certainly gave it a very unique look. Carrying on with the pre war cars and vintage British cars in particular, we've got a good old Morris here. I think the registration is OK, 9178, a bullnose Cowley. And that car dates to 1923, and clearly the, the gentleman in the group is uh, consulting his map as it's laid over the bonnet there. Um, a great old motoring scene, I love that. Another Morris, slightly later, and another example of the Series 2 Morris 8, this time a two-door saloon. And you can see more clearly the, the solid wheels on these cars as opposed to the spoked wheels on the car that came before. And this has got one of those radiator muffs, the radiator blind on the radiator there, just to help um, with uh, the engine warming up in cold temperatures. Now, this is an interesting little car. This, I think that's a Morris Minor on the right-hand side there, but I was particularly taken with this little trailer. I have a bit of a thing for vintage trailers. I do plan to do a video about those sometime. Um, but yeah, there's clearly some young lads there and a dog enjoying the uh, interior of that particular trailer. Now to Hillman DYH841. This is a 1937 Hillman Minx. Uh, the Minx evolved several times over the years in the 1930s and indeed post-war and the grille changed every couple of years or so. The main body stayed very similar for quite a few years but the front did undergo a number of evolutions. Now a side on view of an MG. I think this is a J2 but not any MG J2. This I think is a police car. You can just see an illuminated lamp above the spare wheel on the back there. You can just see that from the side. So that's probably quite an unusual car. Okay, carry on with these pre-war gems. Now this is a funny one. It's a Ford, obviously, next to a Morris FEH17, but it looks like it's got a 7Y front. The 7Y was only available as a two-door, but clearly this is a four-door car. So I'm thinking it's a pre-war 7W, but with a 7Y front end on it. I've never seen a 7Y four-door. Anyway, and another side-on view here. And now this is a magnificent car. There was a few questions about this one. What car is it? So someone on the old classic car forum suggested Daimler. I think that's a good shout. They made some very regal looking cars in the 20s and 1930s. Um, but if you know for sure, please let me know again in the comments. Always welcome your comments. Thanks to Steve now for this front on view. A great old photograph of a Ford Model Y. This was taken in Oxford, and um, that's an Oxford registered car as well, so it kind of makes sense. Dating the car dates to about 1936, and it doesn't look very old in this photo, so I'm guessing this is probably a pre-war scene. But what a great car that is. Now back to Vauxhalls. Not a Vauxhall 10 this time, this is a much larger car. This, I think, is about 1937, and is probably a 25 horsepower car. They did some really large saloons pre-war, and there was even a limousine version of this particular car. I did have one of those at one point, um, which was even longer than this, but yeah, quite a bit of kit. Now, GCG 510, this is actually a just post-war example of a Humber Hawk, but it's such a great looking car and a great looking photo. Um, please forgive me for including it in this pre-war photo selection because it's very much a pre-war car in style. And what a great look of that is, clearly on a trip out to the countryside somewhere. Same here, same with this Ford Model Y, another ride out to the country. Um, people did this at the weekends quite a lot to get away from maybe, you know, maybe if they lived in a built-up area, they'd often go away at the weekends just for a cruise out in their car, maybe in their first car even. But yeah, that's a two-door Model Y. You could get the four-door version as well. 
Back to Austin. Now, these were actually built just after the war, 1945. The Austin 16 was introduced, but again, I thought I'd include it here. It did use some parts of the pre-war Austin 12, I believe, the chassis, and maybe parts of the bodywork as well. So it's got it a toehold in the pre-war years, so uh, I thought I'd include it here. Lovely photo. And up, up and away. Now, we've got a Wolseley. You can just about see the side vents on the bonnet. Um, they're very similar based on the Morris of the day. But the uh, Morris didn't have the side vents in the side of the bonnet. So I think we're looking at a Wolseley. Now, whether this is at the dock somewhere, I'm not quite sure. There are railway carriages in the background there. Um, so I'm not quite sure of the location. But interesting photo. Now, we've got an interesting one here too. This is the first Lanchester to appear in this particular video. It is, I think, a Lanchester 10, a 10 horse car, dating to about 1934. Daimler, of course was the owner of Lanchester at this point in time so there are many similarities with the main bodies compared to contemporary Daimlers. Now back to Morris but not a Morris 8 for a change here we've got OY2128 this is a circa 1931 Morris Major Saloon quite an upmarket car for the day a lovely shell petrol can just on the running board there you can just make out the shell on the side of it great stuff now this, I'm not quite sure when this photo was taken. I'm guessing it's probably a post-war photograph, but it's an interesting car, P08183. I think it's a modified MGJ2, a 29 to 34 they were built. It's got a few modifications to it. Um, the wheels don't look standard, and there's a, extra horns on the front and so on. Now back to the vintage years, 1920s. This is a lovely old garage looking. You can just about make out the legend of Pratt's power motor spirit above the door there. And on the other building there, you can see Philpot Limited, I think, Garage, something, Morris Service. There's a Morris on the right-hand side there, so that kind of makes sense. And a sign for Standard in the window. And we're inside the workshop now, a proper 1920s car garage. And there's another sign hanging up from the, the rafters there, Standard Cars. Wonderful stuff. Various cars. Is that another bean on the right-hand side there with that fairly distinctive radiator shape? I'm not sure what some of the other cars are, there's even a couple of motorbikes on the left, but just great old scenes. As is this, thanks to Peter for this particular photograph. Um, this was taken in Farnham, DGY575, that's a big old Austin. I think it's an Austin 20 Mayfair. And the gent there is Jack Wady, and he drove Peter's great-grandfather around in this old Austin. So nice to have a bit of history to come with a photograph there. EGC 798 now, another standard, 1937, that's a London registration. I think it's probably a Flying 10, maybe a 9, but I think that's a Flying 10. And the pre-war cars had the vents on the bonnet, as this car has here. And whereas post-war standards, which look very similar to the pre-war cars, didn't have the vents there. A slightly grimy looking photograph here, but an interesting subject. It's another Ford Model Y, but this time a four-door car. And um, what have we got there? AJH648. Very nice car indeed. It's a long rad. The earlier cars had a shorter radiator and a straight bumper. And the, the um, cars like this had the longer rad and the dip in the bumper. Now EKT962, that beauty is an SS Jaguar, three and a half litre car, I believe. Um, KT is a Kent registration, 1938. There is a section on the main old classic car site all about registration numbers, which really can help with pinning down when these cars that you see in the old photos were first put on the road. Now a side view, I did have to do a fair bit of research on this one. Um, some of these photos are quite easy to identify. I think this is about 1915, Singer 10. I had to go trawling through a couple of very hefty books and um, see if I can find a match for this one. I'm pretty sure that's a Singer. Um, probably not 1915, the date of the photo, I'm guessing 1930s. Now YE 1996, this is an Austin 7 Special. Looks like we've got three likely lads here. Looks like they're having a bit of fun in the game, maybe. Are they looking at a map? Is that a map that's spread out over the passenger compartment? I'm not quite sure, but special building using Austin 7 mechanicals or Ford sidelight mechanicals was a very popular subject. Now we have a Morris here, and this looks like a Cowley, a two-seat Cowley, perhaps with a dicky seat in the back that sort of lifted up. Uh, if you occasionally needed to carry any extra passengers, but it's definitely a Morris. And what's that in the background, though? I'm not quite sure about that one. I love the fashions in these older photographs as well. I just think they're fantastic. Talking of fashions and pre-war days, I'm not quite sure what this scene is. I think it's in London. We've got a Morris in the middle there, PK8154, and a few other cars as well. And you can see someone's actually written in chalk on the uh, cobbles there, cars. 
and the Morris is parked up to the line. But what is going on there? There appears to be a bit of a service going on in the street. Anyway, XN8463 is the next car to feature. That's a 1923 London registration, and the car is a Bean. This is a Bean, I think it's an 11.9 horsepower model. Horsepower being the rating for taxation purposes, not brake horsepower. It's not the same thing at all. Love the old standard here now. A couple of people here posed with their standard MT4480. That's a London series which was introduced in 1928 and ran to 1929. I think that's a standard 9 Tinmouth. Tainmouth, Tinmouth. Um, fabric bodied saloon. Yeah, great stuff. Like the doggy in the front there. I almost missed him. Now a side on view of an interesting coupe. This is quite a rare old girl. This is a Vauxhall coupe. I think it's based on the Vauxhall Cadet, about 1931 or thereabouts. I hope it's got a strong roof with that young lady perched on the top there. But yeah, you don't see many of these around at all. So I was really pleased to find this photograph a little while ago. Head on view now of a Morris KP8833. And the young lady stood next to that one. But where have its headlamps gone? Why? Why would you go out for a drive and remove the headlamp? Maybe they were damaged, perhaps. I'm not quite sure what's going on there. But, yeah, it's definitely about 1930, possibly 31 Morris. Um, and there, for comparison, there's another Morris, PK5790. But this one has headlamps. Not the same car. Very similar model. And a couple of ladies perched on this one as well in slightly unusual gear. Is that, are they scouts or something guides related, maybe? I'm not quite sure. I'm sure someone will know, but I'm no expert on that particular thing now here's an old photograph taken from quite high up of a parade i'm guessing in manchester and the only reason i'm guessing manchester is that the car is a crossley a big old crossley tour perhaps is that the mayor in the back holding onto his bowler hat but again wonderful fashions cobbled street lovely old vintage tour chauffeur in the front there great stuff another young lady here with jj2627 and ss2 coupe that's a London series, about 1932, or just about into 1933. Very stylish little car. The early SS's were based on standard running gear. Uh, William Lyons, of course, who ended up forming or reforming the company into Jaguar, what we know very well today. Now, GL6209, that's an Austin Big 7, a two-door Austin Big 7. I do like the garage doors behind it. That looks just perfect. I'd love to have a garage like that in the garden. That would just look fantastic. Okay, we'll carry on with these original photographs here. We've got an interesting one here. I'm not quite sure what's going on there, but the car is a Singer 1026. Uh, and look on the running board there, you've got a petrol can, a two gallon petrol can that is actually single captioned, um, actually created as a proper Singer fuel can. You don't see that with many car manufacturers. Now this is a post-war photo. I hold my hands up. You can see an Austin K8 van in the background, so that's the giveaway, and a few of the other cars there. But this is a wonderful old Alvis JR5139. It's clearly taking part in a bit of an auto test, driving around the cones against the clock. It looks like a lot of fun on an old airfield, I think. Okay, back to Hillman now. FXW740. This is a rare one. This is a Hillman Minx, but a drophead coupe version. That's a late 1939 registration. Um, but the presence of a Morris Miner in the background there you can see, so this is actually taken, I'm guessing late 40s, early 1950s, but it's such a rare pre-war car that I just had to include it here. Now back to proper vintage cars, vintage days, and we've got a Singer Junior four-door saloon here. You can see it's got the suicide doors on the back, the rear hinge doors, the front doors are hinged in a conventional manner of course, but yeah, that's a, that's a great old car. Singer was a really prolific car maker, especially in the pre-war years, they were one of the biggest in fact. Now we've got a series of photographs here of a wonderful old car. This, I think, is a Lagonda, clearly on a continental trip somewhere. I think the car dates to about 1925 or 1926. And if you had the wherewithal and the means to buy a nice touring car like this, you could go off on these continental excursions. Here are a few more photos of the same car. I think um, it's a Lagonda 1460, I believe, a semi-sports tourer. And you can see it in various locations here. Um, but yeah, what freedoms, the, the, the introduction or the availability rather of private motor cars in the 1920s. If you could afford one, it just opened up so many new horizons. And it, this family was taking great advantage of that. Some great scenes. If only they were in colour. That would not just transform some of these old photographs. But never mind, at least the photos survive. That's the main thing. 
they've still got plenty more of these black and white pre-war car photographs and another Morris 8. But what a great setting that is. I mean, it doesn't look like a garage in the background. It looks more of a lodge or a, a roadside cafe, perhaps. But you've got a wonderful array of old petrol pumps there. Wow. I mean, at night, illuminated, they must have just looked fantastic, those globes, the glass globes. Now, another pre-war car here. I'm not quite sure what this is. You'll have to forgive me for not quite being able to identify this one. But it's in many, many pieces. There are bits on the floor. The gent there appears to be holding some pistons. Uh, it's a bit of a light car. It's not a very car. Just look at the size, the proportions of the steering wheel compared to the rest of the car. Um, it's a bit like that Singer 10 that we saw before. Now, MH3018. Back to standards. Um, very distinctive shape of the radiator on these 1920s standard. This one dates to 1924. I think it's probably an example of the SLO4 Tour. Um, distinctive V windscreen on this particular car. See how it sort of comes forward to a point in the middle there. Now, Singers, uh, thanks to Peter for this photo. It's a post-war car, to be honest, this one. It's a side-on view, probably a Singer 10, I would have thought. Um, but it's very much a pre-war car in design, so I thought I'd include it here because it's just such a jolly photo to happy, smiley people there. And uh, there's a lot to be said for that. Now, here's a nice one, another light car, and this is a Rover. You can just about see the badge on the radiator there. And these were actually air-cooled. That's a dummy radiator. It was an air-cooled, the Rover 8. That's an Essex registration, which ran from 1921 through to 1923. So I'm guessing with that number, it's probably a 1922 car. But yeah, lovely stuff. And a great photo. This could almost be a press photo, couldn't it? A side-on view of a Ford Model Y, mid-1930s, early to mid-1930s, something like that. That's got the straight front bumper you can see so that's a short rad car so it's a fairly early one so actually it's probably about 1932-ish or thereabouts but yeah great scene family picnic wonderful stuff another of peter's photos here ace 688 there's a 1934 wolseley i think this is a wolseley nine saloon and that's peter's great aunt sat behind the wheel of this particular car it's a post-war photo you can see a slightly later austin just peeking in the background there but very much a pre-war car there's a prefect on the left hand side there this is an interesting one at the Arctic Circle, according to the sign in the background. So clearly someone was going on a bit of a trip in their pre-war standard here. This, I think, is about 1936. Like I say, bonnet vents, so it makes it pre-war. Uh, circa 1936, flying 10 or a 12. I think the body shells were pretty shared, pretty much the same between the two cars. And here's a chauffeur with his grand motor car and an equally grand residence in the background. What a fantastic scene that is. The car, I think, is a Sunbeam around about 16 horse sunbeam 1928 or 1929 um, but what a glorious car that is in immaculate condition really well looked after the chauffeur's duties would have been to keep that car looking immaculate now we've got a side on view at first glance i assume this was a morris 10m but uh, looking at closer at it this is actually a morris 12 about 1938 slightly different shape to the morris 10m very similar at first glance but when you start looking at the details of position of the door handles and so on and the streaks on the bonnet there are very slightly different now crl 882 that's a cornwall 1937 registered standard and again it's a flying 10 or maybe a flying 12 something like that um, but yeah 1937 standard um, with a group of people stood alongside it. it looks like a nice sunny day everyone's smiling jolly and happy that's what we like to see the young lady here it looks like she is starting or taking driving lessons in an old hillman minx jnw213 you can just see the l plate on the end of the, uh, the front bumper there let me know in the comments what car you first started learning to drive on um, i started on mum's mini and the austin a40 um, but let me know in the comments what car you first drove now dpe 691 another example of a ford model y um, again with two different types of headlamp masks on here um, you've got the traditional one on the further lamp and a slightly different one on the nearer lamp but yeah it's a wartime photograph of a pre-war ford nice one here this is a morris minor the pre-war minor po7554 and this car i'm guessing is about 1934 i used to run a 1934 morris minor just like that you can see a little m uh, badge at the bottom of the radiator there. That's a blanking plug for the starter handle. Big old Wolseley next. Now, I'm not quite sure what model we're looking at here. It's probably a 1456 or thereabouts. As a young lad stood in the foreground. Maybe is that his mum stood in the background. Looked like they were going out for the day somewhere. 
and a Brooklyn sign on the building behind. So I'm guessing that's a hotel somewhere. Maybe they were on holiday somewhere and staying in the Brooklyn's hotel. Who knows? Bit of a racy number here. I think this was taken at Crystal Palace before the war. That's a Twin Cam Austin 7 racer. What a great little car that is. And this was the basis for the Austin Pathfinder pedal cars, which were built in about 1947-48. Uh, super rare pedal car. And uh, yeah, based on the Twin Cam Austin. Back to Austin's main rival, Morris. And we've got CLN 673. Another example of a Morris 8 Series 1 four-seat Tora. What a fine looking little car that is too. Just a few more of these old photographs of pre-war British cars to go and head on view. And they've got a young lady there sat behind the wheel of FKA 504, which appears to be another example of a standard flying eight. Usually they have a little rubber bung in the starter handle hole with an eight molded into it. So that's often the giveaway. But on this car it appears to be missing, but it looks like a flying eight to me. A high up view now, thanks to Steve for this one. It's a little Morris Minor again. Um, J0847. Now this is a slightly earlier Morris Minor. This is about 1930 or 31. The shape of the radiator did vary slightly. And this has got the painted radiator. And this apparently was Mr. Ernest Parker's first car. These three photos are in the series. Next up, a slightly later Morris, and this was Mr. Eric Ernest Parker's second car, WD 8478, circa 1933 or 34, Morris Minor. Note the different grille. Next up, we will have, there's Mr. Ernest Parker again. Thanks to Steve again for this trio of photos. GFC 541, this was his third car. And it's another Morris, a Morris 8 Series E from 1938, and that's a four-door saloon. You could get the tour and also the two-door saloon. And this one's got an opening steel sunroof. And that fantastic photo of an old pre-war Morris rounds out this collection of more pre-war British car photographs. Original photos of pre-war British cars, part number two. If you like this kind of thing, please have a look around the rest of the channel. There is a separate playlist just containing links to all the photograph collections that are now on the old classic car channel and if you like your classic cars vintage cars and so on and especially original old photos of them which i do as I hopefully you can probably spotted by now please take a look around the rest of the channel before you disappear likes comments subs and everything welcomed as always and there'll be more videos along very very soon so thanks for watching this one and bye for now